appreciate it. Um, definitely when we talk about um, granular data at the Census Bureau, something uh, using micro data and using our PUMS files is always a great, is a great option for that. And I'll kind of talk a little bit about what micro data are to begin with. And then we'll start talking about that kind of the differences between maybe the tabulated data that you might see in data.census.gov and um, what you can create in this MDAT, which Sarah was correct, it's micro data access tool, which allows you to kind of um, create your own custom tables using these um, these public use microdata. So first thing up is um, the, the PUMS. It's public use microdata. What exactly does that mean? Um, public use means that it's um, that it's not doesn't include any it protects your um, confidentiality um, as opposed to our just straight internal microdata. It's been, um, it doesn't have that PII uh, attached to it and it has been edited for confidentiality. And it's always, and it's also accessible publicly um, through data.census.gov slash MDAT. Um, also our microdata API. And then you can also more traditionally download it through our FTP sites. Um, the microdata part is what that means is that it's individual responses. So in order to do anything with these individual responses from each survey that comes in, um, you must tabulate it and weigh it for it to be meaningful. So that's where the tool comes in. So let me show you a few more things about the differences with the um, data.census.gov, which is our traditional. I know we've talked about data.census.gov before, but what we're returning are individual tabulated um, estimates or even um, tabulated tables. But what this is, is um, sometimes you can't find everything that you're looking for. And that's when microdata access is a great is a great option. So first off, what data.census.gov does provide you with more precise estimates. That is because on the left, if you see that that internal file, we are taking the totality of all of our microdata and then tabulating it putting it against our replicate weights so that you do get a more precise estimate. You get a wider range of data sets that are available. Um, not all data sets have microdata uh, attached to them that can be really uh, released publicly. Um, and you have fewer limitations to variable geographies. In many cases, something like decennial that goes down to the block level, American Community Survey that goes down to the um, um, block group level, so you can get really, really fine, fine geographies. <clears throat> um, and then you don't necessarily have to have an in-depth knowledge of the variables required. We'll talk a little bit about what that exactly means. Um, now, on the opposite, I guess, a little bit of opposite, if you can't find what you're looking for, you know, in a, in a tabulated table, Sometimes it's because we want to drill down a little bit deeper and go to that granular data. So using something like our public use my, microdata is great. Now, what we have available on the MDAT is the same thing that you can get from our FTP sites. It's really just a tool, so you don't have to have statistical software um, or, or have programming knowledge or even have the space in order to download the full uh, microdata um, file on the FTP site for you then to kind of slice and dice it. Um, so that that's basically what this tool is. It does, uh, it provides you, um, allows you to kind of create tabulated tables when the pre-tabulated tables we have on data.census.gov aren't available. It does have more historical data. We have a lot of like uh, um, current population survey data that goes back, um, you know, lot, uh, 20, 30, you know, 20 years or so. Um, we do have limited geography. So the more, the finer you would like to go with your topics, um, typically you have less, um, less, you know, fewer options for the geography. So in many cases, it's just in the US and states, and sometimes we have uh, Pumas available. And also sometimes data sets that are just not available on uh, data.census.gov, for example, we talked about the CPS. Now let's see a little bit about the differences. So when we look at tabulated tables, so the first one here is a tabulated table that's released on data.census.gov. Um, what you're seeing here is in 2019 in Maryland, there are approximately 
um, 121,160 males who worked in computer and mathematical occupations. That's really great to know, but that is definitely a pretty high aggregate. And that's because that table goes down much, much uh, further and, and finer geography than just um, to state level. So we have to account for those kinds of things and having the aggregates. But what if you're just looking for state level, um, if you're looking for Connecticut, but you'd like to know um, something you know, more fine. So this example is just a male in Maryland who's a web developer. We're able to then be able to look all the way down to that really fine code of the occupation code and look at the um, exactly the number of, or you know, <laughs> estimate based of course, but the number of males in, in Maryland. So definitely a big difference. Um, um, one just kind of just pulls up and the other, you got to do a little bit of work for it. But hopefully in showing you how to do that little bit of work, it's not too bad. One thing I always kind of stress is that we are looking at variables. So many times when you're looking at tables, you might be looking, I'm looking at a poverty table. So you might do our, use our drop down in our faceted filter on data.census.gov and choose poverty and then several tables come up and then you can kind of view the tables, the tabulated tables and look down and see, oh, here's here's by age or here's by um, um, income or occupation or you know something like that. And this way you have to look by variable basis because you're actually putting together a table. So it's always a great idea to use um, the, da the data dictionary. We give you a lot of information in the tool, but always just wanted to show you those kind of helpful links to where to find that for American Community Survey. And then we also have for the CPS ASIC. And then just kind of showing you a little bit, looking at what you're actually going to come across. You know, it gives you kind of the record type. It gives you age. Just looking at this first one, um, the age shows you the numeric that are available. And it shows um, an under one and then it's a one to 99. Basically, that's um, um, where you have a range and then you would need to do a recode for that. Um, and we'll show you how, show you how. This is just kind of just an example of what you see in a data dictionary to put it all together. All right, so let's get into the demo. And like Sarah said, we wanted to show some kind of languages and um, some um, ancestry data. So we have four examples, I'll just kind of walk you through. We do have the slides behind these. Um, so if you kind of get lost in the demo, we have the slides that you can have, um, have to kind of take home for you. But just wanted to start looking at language spoken at home by nativity and sex in Connecticut. So I'm going to switch really quickly. I'm going to go back to data.census.gov. <clears throat> And this is where you find our microdata. So there's a couple places that you can find our microdata access tool. At the top right, it says microdata, and that takes you right there. Or you can scroll down, and it shows you a few other things, and it says access microdata. Whichever way you want, it both does the same thing. Or you can even do data.census.gov, and then you can put in your own slash MDAT. All right, so this is the... <clears throat> Here is the site right now. It's very, very kind of straightforward. You have a selection of data sets that you can do a drop down, find the data sets that you're looking for. Um, for ease, I'm just going to use the ACS one year, but if you'd like to use, um, you know, five year for a more robust return with however you want to do or some of those CPS, there's definitely a lot more under here um, that you're available to. So I'm going to choose the first one. 2021 and the same kind of thing. It goes all the way down to 2004. I'm just going to use the first one, but again, you can use what you'd like. All right, I'm going to click the next button. I'm going to click the next button again. Make sure, there we go. All right, sorry about that. Um, and then from here, this is kind of the layout. So definitely conceptually a little bit different. You have to kind of worry about scroll bars on the side and see all the different variables that are there. But let me try to make it easier. So we want language spoken at home by nativity and sex in Connecticut. So our variables we're going to be looking for are language or spoken at home. We're gonna need nativity and we're gonna get and we're gonna need um, the sex variable. So I'm gonna first start uh, with language. So you have two availabilities. If you have that data dictionary and you know that it's L A N P, you can type it there and then it pulls up. So if you look at L-A-N-P, it's language spoken at home, it tells you there's 131 values of the estimate. 
And if you go down here, this is why um, in some cases people don't need a data dictionary, but I, like I said, I always, um, there's always a lot more in it than what's available, but it's nice to have this detail. If you see, and sometimes it's hard you, you to work with the scroll bars over there, but the detail tells you what's underneath and there's values. There's 131 and it's showing you Jamaican Creole English. You go all the way down to Dutch, Yiddish, all of these different, yes, that's what I'm looking for. Those are the different types of languages. So I go to the left-hand side and I click on it. And you'll see that in the data cart, it shows that there's one. So I've got that added. Now, this is the one that always, um, make sure that you delete that. <laughs> delete the variable or it'll have problems again. So we've got language. Now we need nativity. So we can go in and type in nativity. See what comes up. So we have nativity and we have nativity of parent. Nativity has two values, which looks like what's what I want. It has native and it has foreign born. That's what I'm looking for. And then I'm just gonna click on that one and see that it's been populated over here. Delete it from my label, what I've typed. And then I'm gonna go to the next one. The last one is six. So I'm gonna click on that, pull it up. Look at the details. It does give you one for male, two for female. Perfect, that's what I need. Click on that. See that it's been added to the data cart, and I'm good. The next is the geographies. We wanted it in Connecticut. So click on Select Geographies, and you have Region, Division, State, and this publicly use microdata area. We want the state, so I'm going to click that. Scroll down. Here's Connecticut. Click on that one. And that should have been added. Yep. If you scroll down, you see the you see then it's been added there. All right. So now I'm going to see if any of my my um, data need recodes. So sometimes you don't need a recode. Um, this just allows you to um, before you create your table layout. Sometimes you might want to restrict it. Maybe you're just looking for females and don't want males. You can always take the males out. But if you keep the males and females, you're going to see both of those in those columns. So sometimes I really do like this for more data exploration, um, especially when um, I'm trying to look for what new research are available and what's what's kind of popping up. It's nice to kind of include everything. Um, so nativity, again, you could just choose native or foreign born if you wanted to. Same mm -hmm. thing with language. But again, I think the, the language, it's nice to see what kind of pops up. So I'm actually not going to make any custom groups for any of this, just kind of show you what comes up. And then you can always go back. So as you're kind of going over to the right through each one from selecting the variable select geo then to data cart the next is the data table layout so i'm going to go here and you see that it gives you a pre-filled kind of ta or pre-determined um, table and that's great you can go that way or you can move things around personally i typically like to put my geographies in the column and then like nativity, I may put at the bottom, you know, here, um, or actually it's been restricted. There we go. Nativity right here. Um, or you could put nativity um, also up here and you'll see kind of the columns from there. So it's however you really want it, however it's easiest way for you to take. Um, and then sometimes you can even go back and say, ah, I need to go, I wanna go back and maybe customize my table again because I wanna take, um, it's, it's too much and you take some things out. So however you wanna do it, but this just shows that you're gonna at least get the, um, the different languages and on the rows, and then you're going to get the column layout um, there. Now, sometimes you have to scroll down so you can see everything and move it over. So just be kind of aware of that. All right. So from here, I'm going to make sure it says count. It does in the values in the table cells. And then this bottom right it says view table. I'm going to click on that. Now it shows me that the weighting has been done for me. It's giving me a PUMS uh, person weight. You could use the drop down and change it. Maybe you want it unweighted or change it for some other reason, a housing unit weight. It's, it's obviously not recommended. We're trying to give you the most recommended um, for the best for the variables that you chose, but just, you know, things are there, you know, the optional. And then from here, it gives you the data from um, 
from your table that you've created. And again, you might want to go back in and customize the variables and decide, you know what, I don't want uh, native. I just want to look at foreign born. So just by taking that out, you can go to native and take out nativity and put it not on the table so that it frees it up a little bit because it's just part of the table itself or the universe of the table. You know that all of the returns are for um, are for foreign born. So however you like to do, you know, it's for me, it's a nice way to kind of play around and find out and look and see, wow, I never thought there were that many, you know, Haitians or Germans or or so few of something that I thought. So it's a nice way for me, at least to to do some research. All right. So here, last thing I wanted to show you is that you do have an option to download or share. Um, you can download uh, the table view by clicking um, the table view CSV. Um, download that. Opens. And then you can also share. So you have the data that's available and it's and it's been cited for you. And then you can also go down, slow down. Uh, scroll down and see uh, copy the bookmark and you can share from there so you can always kind of go back in if you needed to um, and you have that base the base table that you're looking for um, it'll go back to the same thing but once you go to next it'll take you back to that table so definitely something that i use plenty of time of going in and adding or subtracting some variables that i'm looking to play around with all right so that was the first example let me scoot on to the next one really quickly the next one is on 21. And we're going to look of place of birth by race for the population 18 and over in the U.S. And one thing I forgot to show you really quickly was one of the things that I always suggest to do is make sure that that table has not already been populated or tabulated um, on, and then released on data.census.gov. And that's because we talked about the precision you have. Um, Against our replicate weights, we give you measures of uncertainty, whereas this doesn't uh, provide you any measures of uncertainty. You're not going to get an MOE with it uh, as well. It's just going to give you kind of some, some base numbers to go with. So place of birth by race uh, for population 18 and over is what I'm looking for. The closest thing we could find on data.census.gov was place of birth by age. It's the B06001. Now that I've checked and I've looked, and um, and saw that the table is available by age, but it doesn't. It has kind of some groupings of age that I'm looking for, but it doesn't have um, it. Do, it doesn't have the age. Excuse me. The um, no, I just lost it. It doesn't have the uh, race breakdown that I'm looking for. And like that's then that's a great opportunity to go in and uh, work on the MDAT. All right. So let me go over here. If you'd like to clear it, you just can click this um, logo at the top left. It'll take you to the main page of data.census.gov, and then you can go to this upper right for microdata and click on that, and it'll take you back. All right. So we're looking at place of birth by race for population 18 and over, which means, and I'm just going to use the same data set, which means that we need um, age, race, and place of birth. Oh, oops, hold on one time. I clicked it too many times. Hold on one second. There we go. So we need age, race, and then place of birth. There we go. Okay. So the first one we talked about is age. Now age, you know, alphabet, it's going to come up first. But I'm going to look at um, age. It says there's two values. We look at the details. And that's because it's a string variable. It gives you 1 to 99, 99 being the top code. And then it also gives you this double zero, which is under 1. With this, this is what I'd like. I'd like to create my own age grouping. So I click on this, and it gives you a big warning about how you can't um, these continuous variables that basically you will have to create a recode for them. And that's fine. I'm going to show you how. But that's what that, 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 that means. All right. So we have age. Then we wanted race. I'm just going to go in and type in race. Hi, Kanine. I'm sorry. Before you move forward, there was a question in the chat. Oh, sure. Could sure. you describe what the different weightings mean? 
So we have different, and I can send you to um, American Community Survey or somebody that would be more appropriate to answer those. But um, there are different weights for housing units uh, or the housing variables, like household variables versus um, person level individual variables. And um, that's we we default to giving you the uh, the most appropriate weight based on the variables that you've done as as prescribed by the the product uh, you know the the um, the data providers and um, but definitely anything more specific about the weighting we can we can definitely get you some um, some emails and some links to to more information. Does that help? That's perfect, thank you. Okay, okay, great. Okay, so we're looking at race. Now from here, if you scroll down, you can see lots of different recodes that have already been done for race. So there's the race uh, AIAN where you look and it just gives you whether um, there's American Indian, Alaskan Native alone or in combination has been included. So lots of very, very specific. But if you scroll down, there's just one that's called recoded detailed race and it has a nine. Um, for the number of values, but there's also a recoded detail race for 67 and also 100. And that just shows all of the different ones that are available. But I'd like just this nine one because I want to use the top nine uh, of the main um, races. So I clicked on the details and see that that's what exactly it is, the values for one through nine uh, for the main races. So that's what I want. So I'm going to click on RAC1P. And then I'm going to go to my next uh, my next variable. The last one was place of birth. So I'm going to go to the label and type in place of birth. I don't know. Um, I don't know the variable, so I'm going to type it and see if that's what exactly what I'm looking for. Go to the details and it let me expand that a little bit and it starts with state level. But if I keep going down, you can start seeing Iceland, Ireland, Italy for places of birth. And there's 224 of those values. So that's perfect. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. I see that all three of my variables have been added. So I'm good to go to the next, which is select geographies. So we wanted this for the U.S. And if you notice we don't have a U.S., that's because it's defaulting to the U.S. if you don't select a geography. It throws me every time, so I'm just making sure to let you know. So you can go ahead and skip this one, and then we go to Data Cart. I'm going to click on Data Cart, and this is where we do um, any kind of recodes. So the, first, the one recode that we're actually going to be working with is the age P. So I'm going to go and click on this one, and it's coming up. First thing I want to do is create a custom group. So I'm going to click on this, and then I see that it allows me to create a label and that it has all of these kind of options that we can do. So the first thing I'm going to do is... I want to make sure that under one is included. And then I'm going to click on this one for the slider, the one to 99. But I don't want to go to one to 99. I want to just go to 17 because I want to have an under 18. So I'm going to try to see if I have a steady hand, and I do, uh, to go to 17. So from here, this is a under 17, or excuse me, an under 18. So I'm going to label um, I'm going to label this group under 18 years and then save the group. And then now what you have is you have your under 18 and then you have this default, which is everything else, and they call it not elsewhere classified. So I'm going to go ahead and in this not elsewhere classified, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with every being 18 and over. So I'm just going to stick with what this is and I'm just going to just change it to 18 and over. And you can, it's your own thing. So you can, you know, 18 plus, you can save it, label it whatever way you want to. And so I, we just have these, these two, these two values that are now available for the, for the age. And then I want to keep the rest of whatever's coming out. I, again, I'm doing more research. So I want to look at all of those different places of birth. I don't want to limit them just yet. And I'd like to see it by all those races. So I don't have anything else to recode. And I'm going to go to the next, which is the table layout. 
One thing to note first is where it says values and table cells. When you're dealing with age, you will always get the drop down, not just a count, but also an average of age. Sometimes you want that, but right now I want to have just the count. So I'm going to click on count and then I'm going to go to my left hand side where you kind of play around and, and make your table. I'm going to go ahead and put this race, um, race 1P. I'm going to keep it where it is. And then I'm going to add the age. I'm going to put age in there too. And you can see how it changes. So what it'll be are is the race. And then under the race, it'll give me whether it's 18 years or younger um, or, or over. And then I'm going to keep um, the left-hand side being all of that place of birth recode. Now, again, um, you can move things around as you see fit. Um, if you prefer to to put this down here and um, you know and see, oops, and see um, each each one by eight, eighteen and over, you're you know totally welcome to do that. However, you want to do it. All right, I'm going to put it back to where I like it, and then I'm going to view the table. And then again, it gives you the weighting um, and then you have those different options. You can actually do the year change here if you're interested. You could even move the variables over now if you'd like to and move them around um, from here if you'd like to. Um, however you'd like to do. Um, but this is now I'm super confused because it's giving <laughs> I'm going to move this back over there. OK, so now you can go down and do some real, you know, kind of looking and, and figuring it out based by each 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 row. Again, we don't have um, it doesn't create um, MOEs or margins of error attached to it. So, you know, be 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 mindful of that when whenever you're using this but um it's, it's a nice it's a nice tool without having to do a lot of um of programming yourself if anyone's done that before it's quite difficult all right so i'm going to go to the next one the third example they're getting gradually a little bit harder a little bit harder and um Hold on, sorry. There we go. All right. So sex by citizenship by poverty. Now, poverty is um, it's definitely one that people use different slices and dices of the different poverty threshold. And this is a good example of how to do that. We go and look at the table. B17024 is age by ratio of income to poverty levels. So it does give you different income to poverty levels. Um but you can't necessarily customize that ratio. Maybe I wanted to do in this example, I'm going to do a two, 250% uh, of poverty and more. Um, so it's kind of an aggregate of, of, of all of these together. So different ways of, of being able to, to use the data. So let's do the MDAT. I'm going to clear everything. There we go. And um, go to next. And my variables are going to be um, sex, citizenship, and then also poverty. So go in and do the few ones that I know for sure are easy to pick up. So sex gives you male and female. I'm going to click on this checkbox. I see it's been added. I'm going to delete what I typed in so it doesn't get confused. And now I'm going to do citizenship and see what comes up. Citizenship status comes up for CIT. I'm going to put the details and I see that it's born in the U.S., born in Puerto Rico, Virgin Islands or northern in the what we consider island areas. Um, and then others um, born by national naturalization or or not a U.S. citizen. So the five values, that's what I was looking for. So I'm going to click on this. <clears throat> and the last was poverty. So you could know that the poverty, you can know the poverty, uh, it's, it's pov pip, or you can just type in poverty and pov pip will come in. It's the income to poverty ratio and you get the details, and now you see, yes, that's what we were looking for, anything that's below 501%, and it also allows for kind of an NA, and then anything above 501%. So that's exactly what we're looking for. And again, it's gonna show that you're gonna have to do a recode on this, but again, it's, it's simple. I'll show you how. All right, so we wanted to do geography. Uh, we wanted to do Connecticut, so I'm gonna click on state. 
to Connecticut. Now I'm going to do my recodes. So I click on the data cart. And then the one recode that I'm going to do is this POV PIP. So I'm going to do the income to poverty ratio recode. Click on custom group. The first thing I want to do is just click on the NA because with poverty, there's a lot that are not in poverty status. Um, so I'm going to take this out, uh, this re, re, just rename it not in universe. And then save it. And then go to everything else and click on the edit group. And now I'm going to start uh, working on my um, my slider. So I'm going to click on this and in the slider, I can slide if I have a steady enough hand or I can just type it in, which is definitely nice. Um, and then go ahead and relabel it. You can relabel it um, below 100 percent poverty and then save the group. And then I'm going to go back into the remainder that not elsewhere classified and add some more. Now I'd like to have, um, I'd like to do between 100 and uh, 220, 249. Let's see if I get, oh, there you go. So this one's going to be 100% to 249% poverty. And then save group. And then the last one, I'm going to edit it. And I'm going to add this group because I want to include the two fit. I want 250 and more. And so I'm going to also include the 500, 501% or more. I'm going to rename it as at or above 250% poverty. And then save group. And we've already talked about citizenship and also sex. We were fine with those variables the way that it is. So we go to the table display. We see the value. It's giving you the average age of um, average of the of the income to poverty ratio recode. But what we want is account. So I'm going to click on that. And then I'm going to move these around as necessary. I do like to have the selected geographies in the columns. Um, typically, <clears throat> and then I'm going to put the poverty recode in there. I'm going to move the citizenship and then sex down to the rows. And then you just look and see, oh, that, that, seem, that seems all right. It looks good to me. So I'm going to go ahead and view the table. And then from there, I'm getting my estimates um, that I can work with. And I see the not in universe and also that below number mm -hmm. as I move over. All right, so let me go for the last one really quickly so we have still have time for the rest of the presenters. And the last one was on ancestry by age in the Connecticut Pumas. So I'm going to show you how to get Pumas, which are um, at areas um, around 100,000 population. They're yeah, defined. Does someone have a question? If I give you my card, can you fill up the gas tank? Because it's enough to get into heart. Well, oh, never mind. I can I can get to heart. For can everyone go on mute? Great. Thank you. All right. So we're going to do ancestry by age in Connecticut Pumas. We looked at the B01001 table, the sex by age. If you look, um, there's all of these breakdowns by age, but it doesn't necessarily give you the breakdown that we're looking for. Um, so it's it's a great one to go ahead and recode. So I'm going to go over here, click on next, because I'm going to use that same data set in vintage. Our two variables are going to be age and ancestry. So our age is already available right here. So I'm going to click on age. And then the last one is ancestry. So I'm going to type in ancestry. If you know that it's ANC1P, you can definitely type that in here. But of course, if you spell it wrong, it doesn't work. So let me actually do that ANC1P. And it pulls up, you've, you've used the data dictionary, you see this 234 values, and you look in and you see all of these different ancestries. That's what I want, so I'm gonna click on this. Now I'm gonna go to the selected geographies. We talked about using Pumas. And so you click on Puma. 
then you go to Connecticut. And then this is the nice way. So sometimes, you know, we, we you can use our Tiger Web Services and actually visualize where the different Pumas are available. Or um, they've done a really nice do- job. Your actually your um, Connecticut State Zeta Center has, you know, defined these areas and also labeled them very, very nicely. So you can look and say, oh, OK, I, yeah, I want Danbury. I want Stamford, I want Stratford. You know, I, I want Litchfield and Middlesex. So you can click on those. If you scroll down, you can see that they've been populated. And then you do the same thing. You go to the data cart. And from here, we're only going to change the age. And I'm going to click on the custom group. because I And I'm going to show you how to do a custom group, which is kind of nice. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do on under 18. So I make sure everything, including the under one, is there. I'm going to... See how steady I am to get down to 17 and do under 18. And then I'm going to save the group. Now this remainder, I'm going to do an edit group and I'm going to do 18 to 34. And put 18 to 34. Save. Now this last, I would like to do chunks of 15 years. So I'm going to do instead I could individually do each one or I can do this auto group where it's between 35 and 99. Yes, I'm going to click on that and it shows it starts at 35 ends at 99. Do you want groups? This is when you could do a single year or five year or 10 year. I'm going to do 15 just because. And I've added those and I see that it's all been populated. So I'm good. I go to my table layout and just decide how I want it to look. First thing, it, it defaults to age, uh, average age, but I like to do a count. And then I see my ancestries are on my rows, which is which is perfect. So I'm going to keep those there. Um, but then for the age, I want to put that in the column, and I like to put the selected geographies in the column. So now I can see that each section is um, each of the Puma, and it's done by age. You can also, if it makes a little bit more sense to do the age just underneath each one, if that works, but that's a lot. Um, so however you wanna do it. And, um, and then from there, view table. If you decide you wanna go in and change and customize the table, you can always do that. Um, and then from here you can see and you can see, you know, some places are going to have a lot of zeros and not be available. And that's, um, you know, as you look and review, that makes sense. And other ones are, are quite populated, but um, it's a nice way of kind of doing some research and definitely getting some numbers when you're not able to find it in the pre-tabulated tables. All right. So from here, I'm going to go back. And we have all of these there. But I'm going to show you um, our information if you have questions from here. If you uh, would like to just kind of stay connected with us, we have um, email updates. Uh, you're able to kind of get our newsletter and other information. And then here's my contact information. <coughs> Excuse me. And also our feedback uh, at census.data at census.gov. We, we know that many of you are trying to um, help out your community, um, doing this for work or for, um, for school. And so we want to make sure that if you have questions, um, that you have a good resource um, and, and we're always happy to help. So with that, I will turn it back over to Sarah and see if there's any questions. Oh, I don't hear you yet, Sarah. Oh, sorry. There you go. A <laughs> no uh, couple questions in the chat box that have been answered, but just want to see if you have other information. People just asking about the geography. Is uh, Puma the lowest level geography? Are zip codes available? Um, and we said Pumas are the smallest, but is there anything else you'd like to add about that? <laughs> Great. Oh, you're on mute now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like tag now I'm it, I right? know. Um, but just yeah it's, it's the higher you know the the higher geographies allow you to go down deep you know down more granular and then vice versa when you um, have to go up in and um, granular data more more 
more across the board data when you're going down. So yeah, Tuomas are the smallest. And in fact, only um, not everything has Pumas. Most uh, even like CPS data uh, just has um, U.S. and state. OK, that's helpful. That's very helpful. Um, someone asked, uh, how do you recommend getting margins of error for these data? I um, would have to send you to the American Community Survey Office. I think they have some um, some guidelines for how you would you would do that. Um, so I wouldn't want to <laughs> I wouldn't want to tell you something wrong. But yeah, just just be uh, you know aware. Um, I'm not sure if they have a factor that you can apply to it um, once you've had the data. But you know, and been able to nice way to kind of download it and then be able to to work with it there. Okay, and if anybody, I know there are people on the call that have that do work with the data and that have have calculated the margins of error. If you have any resources, please feel free to add them into the chat box as well. Um, other questions, you can feel free to unmute yourself or to chat into the chat box. People saying thank you, very informative and interesting and helpful.